Come on, give him some glory. He is worthy of all of the praise. Come on, can we take about 20 seconds just to give him thanks? Oh, come on. Come on, let me hear you. Lift up your voice. Come on, give him thanks today. Oh, come on, I feel a praise today. Give him thanks today. He's a mighty God. Oh, somebody shout, he's mighty. Somebody shout, he's holy. Somebody say he's wonderful. Somebody say he's a strong tower. Somebody say that he's a prince of peace. I don't know what your testimony is, but I call him Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Somebody say Jesus. Because at his name, every knee has got to bow. Every tongue shall confess. He is Lord. Somebody give him glory today. Give him thanks today. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived. Shall what leave this place? I was glad when they said unto me, Let us go into the house of the Lord. I enjoy Sunday mornings just getting up and just worshiping God in His holy place. Hallelujah, somebody today. Can you declare over your day today that today shall be a good day? Come on, testify to about three people that today shall be a good day. I woke up feeling a certain way, but today shall be a good day. Hallelujah to somebody today. At this time, we're going to call up Minister Jordan to give us our opening prayer today. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is worthy to be praised. Let us bow our heads. Eternal Father. God of the living. All things were made by you and for you. And before you, Father God, there wasn't anything made. We thank you for life well within itself. Father God, we come to your throne of grace. We don't come as beggars, but as believers. But if we had to beg, Father God, we wouldn't be too proud to do so. For Father God, you are a good God, a great God, an awesome God, a God that cares about his people. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for allowing us to come in this house once again, Father God, that we may congregate with one another, Father God, to fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Father God, we come with the, our lips of sacrifice and giving unto you all that is due. Father God, we ask that you forgive us of our sins, Father God, because there are many. There are some things, Father God, that we did that we shouldn't have done, some places we've gone that we shouldn't have gone, and some people, Father God, that we have cursed out that shouldn't have been cursed. But Father God, you are a forgiving God, a loving God. Father God, we ask that you just allow your Holy Spirit to come within each and every individual in this place. Cause a spiritual healing within us, Father. Cleanse us, Father God, of all unrighteousness, Father God, and the sense of independence because our dependence depends on you. We thank you, Father God. We usher in your Holy Spirit. Let our praise and our worship, Father God, be a foundation of your seat, Father God. Sit on our worship. We thank you. And we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been revived when we when we shall be. Touched and we've been renewed without, without a doubt. We'll know that we have been revived when we, when we shall be. What a mighty God we serve. Come on. 
Somebody give him glory today. Come on, give him glory. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. This time we're going to have Sister Iola Mosey come at this time to render us a selection.
we are grateful for this day. This is a day we had never seen before. Grateful for the food that you put on our table. Grateful for the water that you've given us. God, we're grateful because you have been good to us. You've been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And for that, we tell you thank you. Tell you thank you in the morning. We tell you thank you in the afternoon. As the sun is going down in the evening, we tell you thank you. There have been times that your angels have allowed us to awaken in the middle of the night out of our sleep to simply tell you thank you. We are truly grateful. It is in the Jesus, it is in the name of Jesus our Christ we pray. And all of the people said, Amen. Amen. To God we give the glory. We are most certainly humbled and honored to be in the presence of the saints of God one more time. And we most certainly are honored that God would give us the opportunity to break the bread of life. And so most of you uh, in on site and those of you on the virtual campus, you've already noticed that we have a new toy and we're trying to figure out how to how to use it. I do want us to come open the pages of your Bible uh, to Bibles to the book of St. Mark. We come back down to our investigation of Mark's gospel. I want to look at for the sake of context verses 1 through 21. 1 through 21. But however, the text, we land within the context beginning at verse 7. And when Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Mark's gospel, chapter 8, verse 17. Why reason ye because ye have no bread? 17th verse. You hear pages still turning here on site. Mark's gospel, chapter 8, verse 17. When Jesus knew it, he saith unto them, Why reason ye because you have no bread? Perceive ye not, neither understand. Have ye your heart yet hardened? Having eyes, see ye not. Having ears, hear ye not. Then pen underlined, if that's your Bible, where Jesus posed this question on top of the prior question. He says to his disciples, and do ye not remember? Can the church say that with me? Do ye not Remember, I want to talk about, for the sake of topic this morning, don't forget to remember. Don't forget to remember. There are 25, maybe 30 of us on site. We're coming to the conclusion of this pandemic. I pray, amen, hopefully, Deacon Dean, I speak that in my prophetic spirit, prophetic gift. We're coming to the conclusion of this pandemic. Let me uh, go deeper in the water and encourage each and every person to rethink, if you haven't done it already, rethink getting vaccinated. Amen. I'm in deep water with some of you all, and I can't tell you what to do. I'm just simply asking that you rethink it. Amen. Amen. Don't forget to rethink it. Amen. Saw some startling statistics just the other day, Sister Pew, uh, that the Hispanics are leading the way in getting vaccinated. Hispanics, uh, they're already up to 39% of their population, followed by our Caucasian uh, brothers and sisters. They are in the high 20s, uh, early 30s, but African Americans, only 22% of us have been vaccinated. Can I just plead with you to rethink getting vaccinated? 
Uh, someone told you that if you take the vaccination, you're going to get a COVID-19. That is not true. Rethink getting vaccinated. Amen. Someone told you that if you take uh, the vaccinations, strange things are going to happen to you. Well, let me tell you the truth. You may have a sore arm for a minute or two, and you might have to take a nap the day that you get uh, the vaccination, but that's about the worst of it, amen. If you don't take a nap, then you may have some challenges, but rethink getting the vaccination. We want to be, we want to be safe so that we can serve. We want to be safe that we can serve. I'm feeling some resistance there. That's why I didn't want to tell anybody to do it, Brother Jones. I simply said re rethink it, amen. I want to talk about this morning, don't forget to remember. And some may suggest to us, Minister Pugh, that forgetfulness is a sin. There is a school of thought that would suggest to us, Sister Dean, that forgetfulness is a sin. And we counter that school of thought with this response, not to make a conclusion as of yet, stay with me, we all must admit that sometimes forgetfulness is a normal thing. And for those of you that are like me, you've hit 55 already, or perhaps you're coming around the curve in your early 50s, you're able to join the senior saints and blame that normal forgetfulness on what we call having senior moments. And so before we conclude, before we stamp the fact that forgetfulness may, may very well be a sin, let's get this out there. Some forgetfulness is normal. Reverend Doja doesn't have that problem yet. He's still young and full of fire. Amen. But I would suggest to you that if you look closely in this text in context with us this morning, that there is another type of forgetfulness, and if we are not Careful, it leads to evil. While some forgetfulness is just, some, forget, some forgetfulness is simply absent mindedness, some forgetfulness, according to what Jesus is teaching, allowing Mark to list here in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 8, some forgetfulness is due to having a hard heart. Sometimes we just forget things because we want to forget things. Help me, somebody. It has nothing to do with absent-mindedness. And ultimately, it leads to us really being disobedient. Say amen, somebody. It's not just negligence. It's disobedience. I can get it. Hopefully, y'all won't throw your Bibles at me. I get it sometimes. Amen. The first time, the second time, you say, Pastor, you say, Brother Deacon, I really forgot that Bible study is every Tuesday night. Amen. I, I can handle that, but, but my brothers and sisters, after one month and two months and three, don't throw your Bibles at me. Sometimes that type of forgiveness all the time, in that case, that's not that's not absent mindedness that's simply disobedience i didn't expect a whole lot of amens i wrote it right there on my notes amen you're not gonna get a lot of amens there thought about thought about uh, uh brother doji and those of you that uh, that have the opportunity to share and be with our young people day in and day out i thought about you parents amen i thought about even when i was young how young people back then and still now they have, and we used to have the audacity to say that we forgot to do our homework. Sometimes it's not that we forgot or forget. We simply, what I'm calling today, amen, Minister Pugh, we simply make convenient decisions. Can church say convenient decisions? We simply choose not to remember. And so, my brothers and sisters, will you all help me argue the case today? Don't forget to remember. It is in Mark's gospel, chapter 8, that the disciples, they are guilty of this sin of forgetfulness because they have chosen not to remember. The text says, if you have your Bibles, if you remember to bring your Bible. The text says, in those days, the multitude being very great 
and having nothing to eat, Jesus called his disciples to him and said to them, I'm having a moment. I'm having compassion on the crowd. Compassion, this feeling that comes from way down in the bowels. Jesus is saying, I'm feeling for them down in the depths of who I am because he loves them. And so the text says, Jesus says, I have compassion on the multitude. Because they have now, watch this, they have now continued with me three days and having nothing to eat and if I send them away he says in the text if I send them away hungry to their own houses they will faint on the way for some of them have come from Fort Pierce they've come from afar off and then the disciples answered him, listen to this closely, watch this, Sister Felder, how can one satisfy? This is what they asked Jesus because they are guilty of the sin of forgetfulness. I'm going to show you in the record. They asked Jesus, how can one satisfy these people with bread here in the wilderness? Look closely, look closely, look closely. Don't get ahead, amen. Read the entire context. This, my brothers and sisters, is the record, the miracle of the feeding of the 4,000. Can church say the 4,000? He asked them, how many loaves do you have? And they said, Deacon Dean, we have seven loaves. And so he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground and he took the seven loaves and gave thanks. He broke them and he gave them to his disciples to set before them. And they set them before the multitude. They also had a few. Can the church say it a few? Because you're tempted to get this one mixed up with the 5,000. Amen. Not counting women and children where they had two fish and five loaves of bread. But this is a different miracle. Can the church say this is a different miracle? And in this miracle, Jesus said, listen, what do you have? They said, on this occasion, we have seven loaves. And the text says he took them, he gave thanks, and he broke them. And they also had a few small fish. And then Jesus prayed a second prayer in the 5,000 miracle. He only prayed one time, but in this miracle, he prayed two times. He said to them, also before them, set this before them. And the Bible says they ate, watch this, they ate and they were filled, they were Feel, they were feel, amen. Anybody ever been full? I'm so full, I don't even want dessert, amen. It's a good feeling to be full. Can the church say they were filled? And even after the 4,000 were filled, amen, only started with seven loaves and a few fish, the text says they took up seven large baskets of leftover. I think they only had 12 in the other miracle, but this time they have seven large baskets of leftovers. If I had time, I'd tell you that leftovers are good. Can somebody say leftovers are good? They had seven, seven large baskets of leftover fragments. Now those who had eaten, and the text makes it clear in case we've gotten ahead of Mark, this is those, this is the miracle of the 4,000. Look at verse 14. You still have your Bibles? You still have your Bibles? Did you remember to bring your Bible? Now the disciples, they had forgotten to take bread. That's, that's, that's not the sin. This is not the sin. They, this is simply absent-mindedness. They, they forgot to take bread. They, they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. This is moving beyond the miracle. Watch this. Stay with Mark. He's in a hurry. We know Mark is in a hurry, so you have to sit up straight and pay attention. He's moved beyond the miracle. Now he takes us a few hours later, and the disciples, I don't know why or how they forgot, they had leftovers. Sometimes we intentionally forget the leftovers. I like when Sister Philpott and my children forget to eat the leftovers. That's good for me. Help me, amen, because I have no problem eating leftovers, amen. Grandmama Pinch those beans tasted better the second day than they did the first day. Anybody ever had good leftovers? 
text, Brother Jones says they had forgotten to take bread. And they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. Then he charged them, he, Jesus, charged them saying, take heed. Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they reasoned amongst themselves saying, it, it, is it because we have no bread? He's talking like this. But Jesus being aware of what they were saying and thinking, he said to them, why, why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Is your heart still hardened? Watch this, brothers and sisters. How, how is it that Jesus is rebuking them for forgetting? No, we have to understand that Jesus is rebuking them for that side of forgetfulness that is leading to evil. He says, is your, is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you even see? And having ears, do you not hear? And then he says, what grabbed my attention for the topic uh, this morning, and do you not remember? What is it that you want us to remember? You, you are majoring over minor things. I'm trying to teach you how to be aware of that sinful nature of the Pharisees and Herod and you are really thinking that I'm concerned about you only brought one loaf of bread. Sometimes my brothers and sisters we major over minor things. God would have us to penetrate the community in which he had placed us but we are majoring over what color shoes we ought to wear and what color tie and what color dress we ought to wear. Jesus says you are intentionally trying to forget something. He says that right here when I broke do y'all not remember that, that, that eating is not a problem for me. Don't you remember? And then he goes back two chapters. Mark, Mark says now I want you to compare the two miracles because there's a purpose as to why Jesus brings up both miracles. He says, when I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, then he gives them a quiz. Since you want to act like you didn't pay attention in class, let me ask you a few questions. How many baskets full of fragments did you take up? They said, we took up 12. Also, when I broke the seven for the 4,000, how many large baskets of full fragments did you take up? They said unto him, seven. So he's saying to them, or rather then he says to them, why are you majoring over minor things? How is it you still do not understand? Can I parenthetically put this in here, my brothers and sisters? Amen. I want the angels to hear this. I don't need another pandemic for God to get my attention. I realize that I'm not to major over minor things. It ain't about the suit I'm wearing. It ain't about, amen, the collard greens and the potato salad. Jesus says, listen, man, I can feed you whenever I get ready. I'll put clothes on your back whenever I get ready. I need you to stop majoring over minor things and focus on that in which I called you to do. Can the church shout, don't forget to remember? And brothers and sisters, it is important. Mark is in a hurry, so let's catch him before he gets to chapter 9. It is important that we see Mark's purpose of sharing both miracles. Mark intentionally wants us to contrast or compare both miracles. Feeding, the feeding of the 5,000, Brother Dozier, just two chapters, Mark chapter 6, was 5,000 men, not counting women and children. So simple, simple mathematics, simple logic would give us a probable solution, a hypothetical, if you will, that Jesus probably fed about 20 plus thousand on that day. There were, there were, in the first miracle, Mark chapter 6, there were five loaves and two fish. He got the five loaves and two fish from the little boy. That miracle in Mark chapter 6, they were only in the wilderness one day. And on that occasion, they took up 12 
baskets of leftovers. It's important, it's important that we see Mark's purpose of sharing both miracles. He wants us to see the distinctive differences between the two miracles. He also wants to make sure that we know that in Mark chapter 8, this is a different crowd. There are 4,000 here. Total, total 4,000. Men, women, boys, and girls. There are seven loaves and a few fish on this occasion. And they are in the wilderness for three days. And not just one. Now listen, I have in my spiritual imagination notes that would challenge us how many of us can hang out with Jesus for three days and not worry about what we're going to eat. Somebody ought to say amen. Seven baskets are taken up of leftovers. Now here's the question. I'm almost done. What's the purpose of the miracle? What is it that he wants us to draw from the contrast? And who is it that he really wants us to see? The purpose is to look and to see how God knows how to deal with different audiences. First miracle is about the crowd. The second miracle is about the disciples. There are things we do for the masses. But then there are things we do for those of us who say that we are disciples of Jesus Christ. But in both miracles, Sister Cooper, he wants us to see Christ. He wants us to see who Jesus is. And then he wants us to understand why Jesus came. Why tell us this miracle, Mark? The first feeding, Jesus was focused on the drove, on the crowd. The second feeding, he's focused on the disciples. The first feeding, the first feeding, Deacon Cooper was a teaching of Jesus. This second feeding, it is a test of Jesus. Somebody ought to shout amen. First, first he teaches us. And that's why we ought not forget what has been taught to us, Sister Griggs, because the same Jesus, Brother Horn, that taught us something, he will come back and test us on what he taught us. Y'all right. ain't, ain't getting it, amen. He taught me in Bible study, amen, that, that, that David said, I've been young, but now I'm old, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. When I started this journey, I was about eight, nine, ten, but now I'm 56. He was teaching me then, but now he's testing me. Man, y'all missing this. Help me, somebody. He was teaching me to honor my father and my mother in Sunday school and BTU. And now I'm old and, and I'm grown and I'm all on my own. I can do what I want to do when I want to do it. He was teaching me then, but now he's testing me. Can the church say, don't, don't, don't forget to remember. Jesus has taught us some things. And so this first miracle, the 5,000, not only is he teaching and testing and comparing the both, both miracles, but in the first he was deepening our faith. He's trying to get us to see that he has the power to take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed the multitude. But in this second miracle in March, Mark chapter 8, he's giving us an opportunity to reveal our faith to him. Y'all missed it again. Amen, somebody. Jesus, my brothers and sisters, in the testing period, he wants to see will we trust him even when it doesn't seem like it's trusting time. I ought to have some witnesses in here. Amen. How, how is it that you're able, mama, how is it that you're able, senior saints, daddy, to know that God is going to take care of you in the midst of the hurricane? And some of those old saints will tell you, well, he did it for me back then. He'll do it again. Can the church say amen? And so as our faith was being deepened, 
in the feeding of the 5,000, not counting women and children. Now, in this miracle, the feeding of the 4,000, Jesus wants these disciples to be able to speak up. This time, they ought to be able to tell the crowd, don't worry about lunch. Just a few days ago, we saw this man from Galilee take two fish and five barley loaves. They ought to be able to tell them, Brother Pew, listen, there were about 20 plus thousand just a few days ago. This is small change for Jesus. There's only 4,000, and that's what we do. We think that our problems are the biggest problems that God ever faced, and that's why you ought to talk to some of those senior saints. They'll tell you, baby, what you're going through. That's easy for the God that we serve. And so let me hasten, my brothers and my sisters, three things I want to give you. D. Cooper said, wow, we're just not getting to the three things, but I'm giving them to you quick. I'm, I will give them to you as fast as you can write them down. Now, if it takes you a week to write them down, it's going to take me at least 10, 15 minutes a point. <laughs> Somebody ought to say amen. Listen, don't forget to remember. Can I tell you why? Spiritual forgetfulness is dangerous because it decreases our faith. Spiritual forgetfulness is dangerous because it decreases our faith. I know what the writer of the book of Hebrew wrote, I know that faith is the evidence of things not seen. But faith is also trust built upon knowledge. Grandmama didn't have a whole lot of education or knowledge, but she learned from past experiences. And she said, and I'll say it again, she had this theology that if he blessed me on yesterday, yeah, yeah, that yesterday we, we did good in the field, she would say. I brought home a whole hamper of beans. But today, we didn't do as good. I only have a bucket load today. But faith taught grandma that the same God that blessed her with the hamper, man, I wish I had some preaching in me, is able to bless her with the bucket. So we ought not have spiritual forgetfulness because it decreases our faith. Secondly, Spiritual forgetfulness is dangerous because it causes us to doubt God. Can the church say amen? How many of us know that we can't prove it sometimes? We can't even find a scripture in the Bible to show somebody. The only thing we have is our Ability to remember. I don't panic as soon as I get sick because I've been sick before. I don't, I don't, I don't get all chaotic and confused when light bill doesn't make it to FPNL on time. Can I confess? Some of y'all embarrassed because it won't. This ain't the first time. My light bill and, and brother Nesby said it ain't gonna be the last time. And so listen, I'm not going to forget the God that blessed me on yesterday, brought me out of darkness into the marvelous light. I'm not going to allow the sin of forgetfulness to cause me to begin to doubt God. When I look back over my life 
And when I think things over, yeah, I've had some good days and I've had some bad days. But when I really look and focus, I must admit that the good days, they outweigh the bad days. So in other words, I won't doubt God. I'm like those boys that were in the fiery furnace. They were there and the fire had been turned up. I'm like, I'm like Daniel in the lion's den. I don't know, devil, what God is going to do. But I do know that he's able. Can the church say we serve an able God? And so lastly, spiritual forgetfulness is dangerous because it dulls or it decreases our understanding. I don't know how he fed the 5,000 and the disciples did not learn as a result of that miracle that they are serving an able God. And I don't know how he can feed 4,000 and they get out, out there on the boat and they're worried about peanut butter and jelly. But can I tell you something, my brothers and my sisters, I won't allow my understanding to be dull. I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure that there is no problem that God brings me to that he's not able to bring me through. And I wish I had some preaching in me. And so I'm simply stuck by to tell y'all on my way to Alabama this week don't forget to remember the wonderful work of Jesus and what he has done for you Carlton Pearson why don't you help me with this Jesus I'll never forget never forget what you've done for me can the church say Jesus I'll never forget how you set my soul free. Can the church shout, Jesus? I'll never forget how you broke me out. No, 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 I'll never forget. Jesus, Lord, what you've done for me. I'll never forget how you set my soul free. I remember how you took my feet out of the muck and miry. Pick me up and turn me around and put my feet on a solid ground. Can the church say, Jesus, I'll never forget. I'll never forget I was on my way to a burning hill. But Jesus, you set me free. You met my friend when I was friendless. I'll never forget what you done for me. I'll never forget how you lifted my burdens. I'll never forget how you fed me when I was hungry. I'll never forget how you took care of my children when they were miles and miles away. Don't you forget, or rather don't you remember not to forget, don't forget to remember because the Lord been too good to us. I'll never forget how you died on Calvary. Jesus, I'll never forget how they stretched you wide. Jesus, I'll never forget how you took that spear in the side. Jesus, 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 I'll never forget how they put a crown of thorns on your head. Jesus, I'll never forget how they took you off the cross and put you in a bar or two. Jesus, I'll never forget how you didn't stay dead. But on the third day, you got up with all power. Can the church say all power? Can you shout yeah? Shout yeah! Say yeah! To remember how good God been to you. Don't you let God bring you through a pandemic and you forget where the church house is at. Don't you forget 
to remember that God bless you throughout this pandemic. Food on your table. Don't you forget who's responsible for that stimulus check. Wasn't Biden and wasn't that other fellow. If it had not been for God on our side, can the church say Jesus? I'll never, I'll never forget. God bless you. And God keep you. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. Jesus, I'll never forget how you said. I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never, never. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. And Jesus, I'll never forget how you said. forget no ne never and how can I forget what you've done for me and how can I forget how you set me free I'll never forget. No, 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 no. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, 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 no. Jesus, I'll never forget. No, never. There may be one today that may not know Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. We take out this time right now just remind you of his goodness. And you may be wondering how is it that throughout all my life things have gone on but you still declare that God is good. Because God has given us something that's a promise of hope. That the same Jesus that we're talking about that walked this earth that performed miracle after miracle after miracle he left this place and said that I'm coming back for you. For those of you all that are saved. So if that's you today that don't know him, we offer Christ to you today. Can everybody do me a favor and just breathe in and breathe out? Being saved is as easy as breathing. It doesn't take a lot of hoops. It doesn't take nobody laying hands on you. All it takes is just a confession with your mouth and a belief on the inside of your heart. So if that's you today, we invite you to come. If you're in the building, we invite you to come. If you are online, we invite you to come. You can call the church at 561-832-2101. And there will be somebody to speak to you about your salvation. If you're glad for your salvation today, won't you put your hands together? And say that for me one more time. Jesus, I'll never forget what you've done for me. And Jesus, I'll never forget how you set me free. Jesus, I'll never forget how you brought me out. Jesus, I'll never forget. What you've done for me I've been crying all night long But how can I forget How you set me free How can I forget How you brought How you brought me out Jesus, I'll never forget No, never Jesus, 
I won't forget it. Come on. Those nights when you wiped all of my tears, I will not forget it. It wasn't mama, it wasn't daddy, it was Jesus. Testify to somebody and say it was it's always been Jesus. Every time I turn around, it's been Jesus. Church say amen. Let us look to the Lord for dismissal now unto him who is able. Surely amen able to keep us from falling and to present us faultless before the presence of his glory to the only can the church say this to the only the only wise God be majesty dominion both now and forever and all the people said